Hello everybody. So Ola Braverman's illegal migration bill is repulsive in many forms. One of those is what John McDonnell is going to speak about here. The Labour MP has two immigration detention centres in his constituency, both of which have a chequered past. If left unamended, the illegal migration bill will override current legislation that prevents children being detained in migrant detention centres. Labour's John McDonnell here delivers a powerful speech as to why we cannot go back to the days where children are being detained in these often deeply unpleasant places. Let's have a listen. Um, the reason I want to speak on this is because I'm not sure how many members have actually had experience of having children locked up in their constituency in the way that the member for Orkney and Shetland has, and the same with my own constituency. And I also, I was a house father of a small unit children's home for a period of years near Heathrow as well. And I think it's important that members fully understand and appreciate the consequences of their actions yeah. in supporting this legislation. In my constituency, I've got two detention centres, Armersworth and Colnbrook. Prior to 2012, children and their families were detained in Harmsworth in particular. They were, they were locked in, they were imprisoned. Mm. The last report in the Her Majesty's Inspector of Prisons described the setting in Harmsworth as bleak and prison-like, yeah. and it is. The experience of the regime is harsh. We've had suicides and we had another death in Colnbrook last Sunday. That's been referred to. In Harmersworth, with riots, the place has been burnt down twice. When the children were there, like the member for Orkney and Shetland, I visited. And I'll tell you the story of one of my visits at Harmersworth, when the children were detained. In, in Harmersworth, we had a small classroom to deal with children, and they were primary and secondary age, and it was heartrending. Now, on one occasion, I visited, they had a poetry lesson and they chose uh, to write a poem on subjects of their choice. One of the young girls wrote us on the subject of freedom. Mm. She wrote, freedom is the sand outside the gate. Mm. It broke my heart seeing these children locked up in that way. All the experts I've spoken to, the teachers, the child psychologists, the doctors, they all reported the impact it was having in traumatising these children, often scarring them for life. We've also demonstrated time and time again from the various research reports of the children's experiences that they actually suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Their experiences in detention were exacerbated, obviously, and piled on top of what many had already experienced in their country of origin, which forced them and their families to flee and also their experiences on the journey here and what they've gone through. In one children's society report at the time, the expression was used, state-sponsored cruelty. Mm. No, certainly. I'm grateful to him for giving me because this is so important. You know, it's so, there are so few of us now who remember what it was actually like. When children are coming here, they are thrown into association with some of the worst people imaginable. When I, the people that I saw in Dungavel, some of them absolutely needed to be in detention, but the idea of holding them in the same facility mm. as children just took that inhumanity to another level. Exactly. In the children's home that I was a house father of, we dealt with some of the children that had been coming from detention, and we understood the traumas that they've gone through. Before 2010, just to remind the House, many of us on a cross-party basis, Conservative, Labour, Liberals and, and others, campaigned to end child detention because the numbers were increasing year on year. Once you establish the principle, it's interesting yeah. how the numbers increased. At one point, there was an estimate in Yarlswood of a thousand children and families. The campaigns made this an issue in the run-up to the general election of 2010. And some of us, many of us, signed a commitment, a, a commitment to make this country a place of sanctuary. And thank God what happened was people of this country woke up to what we were doing to children. 
and the way children were being treated. Children's Society's reports evidence the individual experiences of the children as well as the research. We made that sanctuary pledge. Citizens UK, some people will remember, and other religious bodies and community groups and trade unions all came together in one mass campaign. And we had a huge breakthrough after the election. David Cameron was convinced and supported by, yes, Nick Clegg, and yes, she's not in her place at the moment, the right honourable member for White Maidenhead. And after over a decade ago, we ended, we ended with unanimity in this house, the detention, the routine detention of children. No more children were imprisoned in harms within my constituency or any other detention centre or prison-like facilities. And then we took that pledge and we enacted it in legislation, cross-party support in 2014. There were some exceptions, obviously, and I regretted some of those, but I can understand some reasons why there were a small number of pre-departure pre accommodation was provided, but no, one was, no child was left in a detention centre. This bill, I'm afraid, whatever the Minister has said, it removes those protections. It removes those protections we arrived at cross-party, unanimously, over a decade ago. So my plea to this House is just please do not take us back to those barbaric days. Yep. The lives of children are de devastated. And the estimate is 8,000 children face detention as a result of this legislation okay. under the proposals in this bill. It will create lasting, almost irrecoverable damage to those children. And I just appeal in all humanity for the House to reject these proposals. Yeah. I'm going to show you something ironic in a minute uh, following that speech. It's amazing what time does to people's memories. They say time is a great healer, but I suppose time can also make people forget just how bad things were. And it can lead to the revisiting or the reopening of those old wounds, just out of sheer ignorance, to be honest. And it's fantastic. There are people like John McDonnell of the Labour Party and Alistair Carmichael of the Liberal Democrat Party just reminding everybody, not that anybody should need reminding that children shouldn't be in migrant detention centres, with some genuinely appalling people. We do deport a lot of appalling criminals. There's no doubt about that. And it cannot possibly be right that children of parents who are just seeking a better life for themselves and their child will be thrown into detention centres. I said before I'd show you something ironic following John McDonnell's powerful speech regarding the detainment of children. And this is it. Jonathan Gullis. Thank you very much, Dame Rosie. And Yes, such a powerful speech was followed by such a miserable man, Jonathan Gullis, the man who, when it was revealed in Parliament, over 200 children, mostly teenage boys, had gone missing from hotels housing asylum seekers. Jonathan Gullis said something along the lines of, well, they shouldn't have come here in the first place. I just feel like... We could have put someone else after John McDonnell. Did we really have to go from such compassion to such... Is there a word? He's just a... Ugh. Is that a word? Is that in the dictionary yet? A... Ugh. Should be. If you open up... Ugh. In the dictionary, that is what you'll see. A picture of Gullis. Anyway, unfortunately, I, I just don't know. There's a conservative majority, but there was enough people in this debate. Theresa May was speaking out against elements of the legislation that were totally inadequate when it comes to uh, the Modern Slavery Act, um, he, as was Ian Duncan Smith. So, so there's 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 plenty of amendments that need to be made to this bill. Um, well, hopefully it would never pass in the first place, but it will. I mean, they have a majority, so that it's so sad. Like they they are. The clock is ticking until the Tories are booted out of office. And it's such a shame we have to go through this. And it's such a shame they just continue to damage our country as much as possible.
in the interim that look we all know the majority want to get a handle on the migrant situation i do of course it's completely inadequate the claims processing time is a joke there are people like john mcdonnell who want to do it compassionately but sadly there are enough people on the party opposite who are trying desperately to cling on to their jobs it's a real backward step yet again for our nation whether people realize it yet or not yeah it's just really sad all right thank you for watching and take care